So now that we've just created this pet class, let's expand upon it a little bit. Um, and now let's first make a class um, called a dog. And this dog is also going to be a pet. So this dog is going to inherit some properties of the pet, but it's also going to have some of its own properties. So yeah, let's just jump right into that. Um, and we can just take out all of these, these print statements right here um, so that we have some more time to code. So we can still see all the output from last time. Um, and so what we can do now is we're going to define our class dog. And so what we're going to do is we're going to write class. So this is going to indicate that we want to create a class. And then we're going to put in the class name and the class name is going to be dog. And now because the dog is going to inherit some properties of the class of the class pet, um, to do that, we have to open and close parentheses after the class name, so in this case dog, and inside here we want to put the class that the dog is going to inherit some properties from. So in this case it's going to be pet. So what we're doing here is we're creating a class called dog and this dog is going to get some properties from pet. So it's going to get the name, the age, the hunger, and the playful values, and it's also going to get the, all these, these functions or these methods associated with it. So the pet, the dog is going to get all of this. And so this kind of prevents us from having to rewrite everything. So we don't have to write all this again. We're just saying the dog is going to get all of these because the dog is also a pet and the dog has all of these um, properties. Okay. So let's, let's just start off. Um, and so the first thing that we need to do, like always, is we need to write an initializer. So we're going to do our def and then we're going to write the initializer. So we're going to do the double underscore and then the in keyword and a double underscore again, and then open and close parentheses. And so the first thing that we need to put in here, because it's a method, it's part of the class is the self keyword. And then we're going to need to put in some other parameters too, but first we can stick with this. Um, and then let's just um, put in a colon here. And so this is going to complete our method definition or our function definition. Um, and so let's just first choose what kind of properties we want the dog to have additionally. So what we want the dog to have is we want the dog to have, um, we want to have a breed. So we want to know what breed it is. So we're going to assign a breed, um, a, a breed property to the dog. So we're going to do self dot, and then we're going to create breed is going to be equal to, um, and then, well, we'll put that in here a second. So we'll just leave this blank for now. And let's also give the dog a favorite toy. So we'll do self dot favorite toy. And so this is going to be the second property that the dog is going to have. So the dog is going to have a breed and it's going to have a favorite toy. So we'll make that equal to whatever we're going to call the variable in a second. And then we can put that down here in a second. So what do we need to put in into the initializer here? Well, we need the breed and the favorite toy, but we also need the name, the age, the hunger and the playfulness for the pet because the dog itself has a breed and a favorite toy, but it also has all of these properties that a pet has. So it also has a name, it has an age, it has a hunger level and it has a playfulness status. So what we need to take in is we need to take in a name, we need to take in an age, we need to take in a hunger, and we need to take in a playful. Um, and then additionally, we're going to need a breed and we're going to need a favorite toy. Favorite toy, like this. And so we can directly assign the breed to be equal to the breed and the favorite toy to be equal to the favorite yeah, favorite toy like this. So what we're doing here is we're, we're initializing the dog class with a lot of parameters now, and we're creating the property breed. That's part of the dog. And it's going to have the value that we put in here for the breed. And we're creating the property favorite toy. And that's going to have the value that we put in here for the favorite toy. Now you remember, this variable name here and this one doesn't have to be equal, just like it didn't have to be equal up here. 
But in this case, we just made it the same just, just for convenience because it makes sense because this variable is gonna be the favorite toy and this is gonna be the property that is the favorite toy of the dog. So they don't have to be the same name, but we're just doing it like that because that's what it's usually done because those variable names make sense. Um, and so the last thing that we need to do is we also need to initialize um, the pet. So we need to call the initializer um, of the pet. So how do we do that? Well, we go into self dot, and here we need to call the initializer. Um, we need to call the initializer of the pet class. And yeah, and then we're gonna put in all the properties of the pet. So we're gonna put in um, name, age, hunger, and um, a playful. So that's what we're gonna put in here. Um, oh, actually, this shouldn't be the, yeah. So this, this shouldn't be the self because the self is referring to the dog. This should actually be the pet because we're referring to the pet class. So this is the initializer of the pet. So the self belongs to the dog, but the init or the initializer that we're gonna call actually belongs to the pet. So this is the one that we wanna use. We wanna go into the pet and in the pet, we wanna call the initializer with these properties. So inside of this class, we wanna call the initializer, this one, and we wanna set these properties. So what we're doing is because our dog is a pet and it takes all the properties of a pet and inside of the pet class, we're gonna call the initializer here and we're gonna give it all these parameters and what that's gonna do is it's gonna set the name, the age, the hunger, and the playfulness for us, like this. So now we've initialized um, our dog. We've set the individual properties, the breed and the favorite toy. And we've also set the name, age, hunger, and playfulness through using the initializer that the pet has um, and that the general pet class has. So now we can also define some simple functions um, for uh, for the dog that are different from the pet. So maybe let's use the favorite toy and let's create a function called um, wants to play. So um, we'll just write def and then the function name is gonna be wants to play. And then we open and close parentheses and inside here we put in the self um, and then we put a colon here like this. And so this, um, this is gonna be a method that's gonna be from the dog. So the dog can call it. Um, and it's, this, this belongs to the dog. And so we have the self keyword here too. And what this is gonna do is we're gonna check if the dog is playful. So if playfulness is true. And if it is true, we're gonna tell, um, uh, or we're gonna return that the dog wants to play with their favorite toy. So, what are, we, what are we gonna do? Well, we're first gonna check if the playfulness is true. So if the dog's playfulness is true, so the dog, because it inherits all the properties of a pet, it also has the self.playful property. So if the self.playful property of the dog um, is true, or so is equal to true, so if the dog is playful, then what we're gonna do is we're going to return um, and then we'll open and close parentheses here because we're gonna return a string. So what we're gonna return is dog wants to play with and then we'll also put in here the, the favorite, the favorite toy. So if the dog's playfulness is true, we're going to return dog wants to play with favorite toy. Um, and if it's not true, so else, we're going to return the dog doesn't want to play. So what we're doing in the wants to play, um, oh, so we forgot one thing here in the if statement, we have to have the double equals, not the single equals because we're making a comparison. Um, so the single equals is the assignment like we have up here. 
and the double equals um, checks if the values are the same. So yeah, we should be careful of that, the double equals and the single equals. So what the wants to play function does is it checks if the, um, if the playfulness of the dog is true. And if it is, then we say the dog wants to play with their favorite toy. Um, otherwise, we say that the dog doesn't want to play. So yeah, let's, let's just create a dog right now and see an example of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, actually, let's call the variable a husky dog, husky dog. And this variable is going to be a dog and it's going to have the name is going to be, what's the name going to be? It's going to be, um, well, we'll just call it snowball again. Um, and then we'll put in an age and the age is going to be five. And then we need to put in a hunger. So we're just kind of following this list here. The hunger is going to be false. The dog's not going to be hungry. Playful is going to be true. The breed is going to be a husky. Hence the variable name husky dog. Um, and the favorite toy is going to be a stick. Just like this. So we use uh, we have to put in all the properties of the initializer like this. Um, so the name comes first, then the age, then the hunger, playfulness, breed, and favorite toy. Um, so these are all the these are the corresponding properties, and they so they go kind of um, element by element here, or, or yeah, element by element. So it's it's pretty much just like calling a function. Um, just the syntax is a little bit different. So we're just creating um uh, we're just creating a dog class here. Okay, so. Now that we've created a dog, let's see if um, the dog wants to play. So we'll create a variable called play and we'll make it equal to, and then we'll access the husky dog. And so we'll take the husky dog, which is this dog, and we'll access the function or the method wants to play and then open and close parentheses. And we don't have to put anything in here because it's just the self. Um, so yeah, that's all that we're gonna have to do. And um, we're just checking if the husky dog, and then inside this husky dog, we're gonna call wants to play uh, on the husky dog. And so um, since this dog has a playfulness of true that we set here, it's gonna see that the playfulness is true and it's gonna return to us, the dog wants to play with the favorite toy. And it's not going to print it. It's just going to save it in this variable. So what we can do in the end is we can print play like this. And so what play is, is play is, is this string here. So this is given back from the method and it's saved in play. And then we can save it here. Um, we can, we can print it out here because we've saved it in here. So let's run this. Oh, missing one positional. So what are we missing? Name, age, ah, we're missing a self in here, of course, because, um, yeah, well, we're inside a class, so we always have to put the self. So now, ah, oh, we also misdefined our favorite toy because once again, we have to access the self. So you can see here, it's, it's very important that we access the self. So the self refers to the property um, of the dog class. And so favorite toy in and by itself, even though we had it here in the initialization, doesn't make any sense. So if we wanna access the properties of the class, we always have to use these self keywords or else as we see here from these errors, um, the program or the computer doesn't really understand what we're trying to do. And so we have to indicate that it's the favorite toy of the class that we're going to return um, because otherwise this variable isn't defined. So if we run it now, then we see the dog wants to play with stick. Um, and so that's, that's what we get from here. And now if we make, so we can change afterwards or we can change the playfulness to be false. So inside the husky dog, we can look at playful. 
So in the Husky dog, we're taking the playful property and we're going to be setting it equal to false like this. And now if we do the same thing as above here and we just over or use the variable play again and we make it equal to and then we access the Husky dog and inside the Husky dog, we check again wants to play. So we call the wants to play method on the Husky dog and then we print play. Um, so we're doing the exact same thing as above here. We're calling this method on the Husky dog. The only thing is now that we change the playful to false, um, this is no longer going to be true and we're going to get the dog doesn't want to play, which we see here. So first the Husky dog wants to play um, because it's true and it wants to play with its stick. Um, and then we change the playfulness of the Husky dog to be false and then we check does the husky dog still want to play and we print it out and we see no the husky dog does not want to play.